Alright, I'm going to show you as fast as I can how to build a zero waste machine. Now this machine can be for anything you want it to be. For this example I'm going to use splitters. Uh, so what I'm going to do with this machine is create splitters without using more raw resources than I need to use to make the amount of splitters that I need. So I won't have any plates lying around, I won't have any extra components lying around anywhere and I won't have used more ore than I needed like I said so I'm just gonna build this thing from start to finish and then switch it on and it's going to just it's just gonna work and I'm gonna explain it as we are going so this can be this requested chest imagine could be you know lines of ore so this is just where I'm gonna get my ore from so that's your ore input there and there is ignore that for now the ore output we're gonna put them on separate size so we're gonna put iron on the left I'm gonna put copper on the right we're gonna have our copper input into our machine right so this is the import into the machine uh, obvious obviously obvious what you need to do with the uh, ore when you get that and that is smelt it so I'm going to bring that in front of these five furnaces take it around to another five furnaces like so take it up to there get another underground belt underground is whatever you want to call it just loop that this whole belt's now a loop and this is the feed into it and it will just loop around so that these furnaces have got a nice supply of ore when these furnaces are busy it will let ore past and these will be able to carry on picking up stuff if they've got nothing left to do so they can pick up ore with stupid belts pick up ore with inserters and do this we can export plates with long armed inserters like so onto the middle belt start put okay so we're gonna get copper and iron ore onto this belt which is gonna go around in a loop they're gonna go into these so we're gonna get copper and iron plate onto this belt so we're gonna sort it there with filter inserters this side's going to be copper, this side's going to be iron and they're going to go like this okay now depending on the orientation of this build you could be building it horizontally you could be building it uh, to the up ways building left right up down it depends to which way you want to have these belts configured because I'm building downwards I need this belt to go up because this insert is going to put stuff on the top of that belt okay the bottom belt will be empty this belt will put it on and this belt will be full then same with this but this belt this side puts it on the bottom so I'll have to explain what you'll see doesn't matter right now okay so we've got our iron and our copper what we're going to need for this build Look in here, we we'll see we need electronic circuits, iron plates, and transport belts because this is what we're going to build. The end product will be the splitter for the electronic circuits, which is very obvious to me, but to some of you it might not be. We need copper cables for copper cables, we need the copper plates. Okay, so we've got copper plates there. For electronic circuits, also needs iron plates, and etc. So we've justified why we need both already. We need iron for other things along the line but uh, we only need copper this far down the line so we need an inserter now first we need a belt there and an inserter this marks how far away I need to put my machines from there because I need to be able to take stuff out so one there gap one there to bridge across that gap 
One there, one there, one there. Tennis belts that. That just served as my gap. Nothing more, nothing less. These will be the copper cable machines on the right, and the ones on the left will be the electronic circuit machines. Okay, so let's put that belt there. Put that belt there. So, copper cable machines need copper, comes onto this belt down there into the machine with a stack inserter like so. I'm going to loop this belt as well just to make sure stuff keeps going around this belt. Make sure that these inserters have got a nice supply because it can stop at the bottom. If the, but if the belt's got to end, you guys know that it'll stop and it'll just carry on up. So this inserter might have a lot and these will it's it's fast. It deals with the stuff faster. Just put it that way. It gets it keeps going around, so you can deal with the plates faster because that's not got. It's not waiting to deal with five. All three of these can deal with the five because it'll carry on going around. Okay, I might not have explained that amazingly, but there you go. Okay, so I'll put an insert there, there, and there. One there. Oop. One there. One there. Because this needs iron plates, which comes down this side. It's gonna go in there like that. Okay. Now then. We've made the. Uh, just need to put the belt there actually. The underground belt, because we need to take the green circuit out of the little system we made there, and they can carry on where we need them. Right, so we need. more iron plates to make transport belts. Because we need transport belts to make the splitters, so we need cogs as well to make iron plates. And so we need another one of these machines, like this, there, to make cogs. In with the iron that the cog needs, the cogs come out. Into the chest. So we've got cogs and iron plate, what we need for transport belts. Cogs go in there, iron plates go in there, and then transport belts will come out there. And to the chest. Out of there with the inserter. Into the. I'm probably going a little bit fast here, guys, but just building it, and then I'll explain it straight afterwards. So, into there. So, this needs belts which he gets from there, iron plates which he gets from there, electronic circuits which he gets from here. Green circuits plus transport belts plus iron plates equals a splitter into this chest. Yay! Okay, that's all we need for this machine. Your machine will look different depending on what you need out of the end. You just need to know. You just need to use your current knowledge of belts and stuff to get stuff to where you need it to go. But uh, this machine right now, let's turn these around. This this machine right now, if it had resources, it would just continuously dump resources onto this belt which would continuously get smelted into plates which would continuously cascade over there into these machines which would continuously produce stuff continuously chuck it onto there until this box is absolutely full of splitters we don't want that we only want 10 so we're going to start controlling this machine with combinators and the majority of the combinators are going to be this one the decider combinator and we, what we're going to control with these are the inserters, basically. So, we take this machine, we say, if the red signal is zero, then we're going to output everything. We take a wire, I use a red wire, and uh, output input into itself, it creates a little loop, and then we're going to take these two inserters into there, and we're going to count the raw materials, what this gets by reading the pulses that these 
upstairs are going to create. Okay, this is where the math starts as well, guys. We need to do a little bit of maths for this machine. You need to know exactly, at this point where we are now, raw resources, we need to know exactly how many re raw resources we need to make the required amount of splitters at the end. So we're going to say 10 splitters. To make 10 splitters, we're going to need raw resources, 160 iron ores and 75 copper ores with the looks of what it says there so what we told this inserter to do is if the iron ore is less than 160 and the copper ore is less than 75 then they can work well there's one more thing we need to tell these inserters and that's how much stuff to pick up at each time I did set that to 160, but uh, there we go. Just make sure. 160, right. We need to tell these inserters how much they can pick up each time. So because these, this number here is in denominations of 160, we can set this to 10. So that every time that this inserter picks stuff up, it'll be 10. So it'll be 10, 20, 30, 40, etc. All the way up to 160. And only be able to put that amount on the belt. So we'll get a total of 160 and not some odd number because it won't be picking 12 up every time and 160 cannot be it can't be a result of multiplying 12 so it will break it will get extra stuff and we'll, ex we'll have extra stuff on our belts and that's not the aim of the machine so we're going to say override to 10 so it only puts 10 on at a time we never get an odd number it's never extra this one's in the denominations of 75 so we override this stacks insert it to five so that that can only put five on at a time they will then tell this what they have put on to the belt I'll I'll only explain this one time because we're, we're going to use this a lot of times in the place so I will explain it to you what it does so while ever this it's not receiving a red signal it'll output everything that it gets input but it'll also remember whatever's been input to it because it's input goes to its output so it's a loop to itself so every time these count one this will count one and also keep that count so we'll, that'll count one I'll say one that'll count another one that'll say two that'll count another one I'll say three and so on but it'll do it simultaneously for both of these inserters so we can count copper ore and iron ore at the same time with that okay and it'll keep that in its memory forever until we send a red signal to it which will reset the count and then these will start working again until that number reaches whatever these numbers say there again okay so we've got our raw resources what we need they'll turn into the plates that we need and they'll come down now we need to deal with the plates and where they go and uh, what we make with them because we could potentially make too many electronic circuits here because the plates goes there first so we need to deal with it so what we're going to do is we're going to take another two of those decided combinators what we same one that we just used at the top put one there one there you can just come up there shift right click and then shift left click and i'll just copy it like that and wire the back to the front or the front to the back do not matter which way you say it it's the same thing and then i'm going to connect Basically what I'm doing here, right, I'm going to explain to it, explain to you, is controlling how much stuff gets put into this machine so that it doesn't get more than it needs to make, exactly how much we need to make. So, this is where we get some more maths. For the splitters, we need electronic circuits, five off, so five electronic circuits per splitter, we want ten, so five times ten is 50 so we need 50 electronic circuits and we've got two machines so we need to divide 50 by 2 which is 25 so this only needs to make 25 because this one's going to make 25 as well so we only need to feed it the amount of materials that we need to make 25 on the out on the output so we look at this one electronic circuit is one iron plate and three copper cables okay so it needs one iron plate and three copper cables to make one electronic circuit 
but we need 25 so we need to times the iron plate to 25 so if iron plate is less than 25 this inserter can work we overwrite this to 1 it's important we read it, we pulse it we copy that to that these are just these are separate circuits but they're the same we're building them exactly the same for two different machines all right so they're both going to get 25 iron plates now but we also need them to get 75 iron uh, not iron copper copper wires so while ever this machine's not had 75 copper wires yet this is going to work we override it to one we read it and we pulse it and we just copy all them because this machine needs 75 this machine needs 75 to make a total of 25 each to make a total of 50 All right? cool I hope that helps I hope that helps the, the explanation helps to what this is doing so we're also going to control these inserters with the same thing we're going to connect these oh, these I don't know which bit I messed up there we go we're going to connect these decided combinators to these inserters. Three separate little things. Same job as everything else we've used so far. It just counts and remembers. So, the reason I'm putting counters on these is because th this machine... Th no, sorry. This machine can only give copper cables to that machine. But... If this one needs it, and that one's got the the one that it needs, it can't give it to that one. And the same with this one. If this one's got copper cable, it can only give it to that machine, and it can't give it to that one. But if that one still needs one, and this one's got the, the copper that's required to make it, it'll give it to this one instead. And this one will end up with a copper, and that will end up with one with the iron, and it can't build it because it's in separate machines. So we have to control this by saying... That uh, we have to we have to split this 75 plates equally, so that we get the right amount we need. Because see this machine in the middle, this machine can give stuff to both. So we want this to have access to more copper than the other two. So if we say to this, we need to split the 75 up into three. So if we say to the bottom one to only work if there's not been 20 in this machine yet, then uh, it'll keep working as soon as it's 20 it'll stop same with this one copy that one to that again we're doing a read we're doing a pulse read pulse read pulse okay same with that this one however is going to be set to 35 because this makes up to 70 because you've got 20 40 plus 35 is 70 so we deal with the 75 copper plates which turns into should be 150 you actually get two per copper plate so 75 times 2 150 again divided by 2 75 into these it's all dealt with we'll get our cables and we don't need any more materials and then the rest of the materials can carry on so what we're going to do now is we're going to take the inputs from both these machines with a green wire connect them to the belt directly underneath the belt that's in front of this inserter and we're going to tell this belt that it can only work if equal or above the 50 iron plates that we need in there so as soon as we've used the 50 iron plates we need there the rest can continue but then this machine needs to make 20 cogs so it's going to need 40 iron plates which we'll have they're on this belt don't worry guys we made the marks we've got the raw resources we did the maths we'll have their weight in there to come down but this machine just got to wait until we've done all done with all the other stuff up there so we take another one of these we put it there get that like that and make sure all these are set to one It's got to stress that this if these aren't set to one then the, the old goal of this machine will be it'll be lost and we'll, we won't have it 
I didn't need to connect it to that one. There we go. Yeah, the, if it's not set to one, the old the old goal of this machine will be lost, and we'll just get extra stuff. Or well, we won't get extra stuff because if we've connected all this stuff up to it. We won't get extra stuff. It just won't work properly at all. So again, this one override to one, read and pulse. It needs 40 iron plates. So while ever there hasn't been 40 iron plates put into the cog machine, we won't get any. Uh, this will work. This insert to work and carry on putting in. I'm also going to read this one. I'm not going to control this one. I'm just going to read it, so we can tell how many cogs have been put into that machine, into that box. Once we've had our 40, then we can let the stuff go. We can let the stuff carry on. So again, like there, well that's 50. Uh, 50. We need this one to say 40. Iron plates is equal to or above 40, and they can carry on past this point. Right, so when we've got cogs that we need for this machine, we need iron plates as well. So we need to count because those we're only can't we're only counting up to the point that if there's another machine after it, we're counting stuff. So the other machine after still got stuff left. So we're going to count here how many iron plates we're using. We're also going to count how many belts I've put into that box. I'm going to override this to one again. And this, we're going to control this again. This needs 20 iron plates. So we're going to say to this one, you can work while ever this machine hasn't had 20 iron plates yet. That will continue to put it in there until there's 20 saved up into this. As soon as there is. Equal to or above 20 iron plates. Everything else can continue down the, uh, the chain. Okay. All the, all the inserters have got their controls set. This machine will now only generate 10 splitters at a time. The only problem with the way the machine sets up at the moment is it will only do that one time ever and all these all these inserters will be disabled because they've done their job because all these all the counters will still have their totals inside and it'll say we made 10 splitters though we don't need to make 10 more we made them so you need to say but there's none left so we'll make 10 more and to do that, we need to create a pulse signal to pulse a red signal into these to reset them so they can start counting again. So we take a decider combinator there and wire the input to that chest. And we say if the splitters are zero, then we're going to output the uh, reset signal, which is the red, like that. But that signal is constant, and we wanted a pulse signal, so we're going to make it a pulse signal by putting in a decider combinator, an arithmetic combinator, and another decider combinator. Now these two dec decider combinators are going to be set to the same thing, which is, while each is above zero, output the input count of each, and they're both identical. This one is going to be each times minus one output each and what we're doing with this is we're going to generate a pulse so we take that constant red signal and put it into there like that so you can see it's above zero so it's outputting it and we're going to take that signal on the first tick on the, uh, on the second tick sorry because on the first tick it gets it gets it in there does it come does its calculation on the second tick it puts it out so we're going to put it out into this one which this one turns in negative on the second on the second tick so the first tick it comes out positive 
on the second tick it comes out of this one negative and we take both of these two inputs and put it into the output of this machine okay now then to make this machine to prove this to prove this little uh, pulser works I'm just gonna take my belts over here so I haven't got any and they're not in the robot system so they can't see them oh I guess I requested two that wasn't cool okay now I'm not requesting them. I've got 11 in there right so now I've got 11 in there for a reason reason being I click that, I'm going to get one straight away. And I need there to be 10 in there. But I also need to have my mouse over there to show you that it does a pulse when I get the when the when it's below 10. So if I now type in 11 or if I just type in 2 and I've got more than enough to bring the number of the box down to to below 10, I'm going to get a red flash. Look under where it's where it says my name last user cert fuxor on the right there look under that that's where you're going to see the red signal you're going to see it flash right so watch are we below 10 no it's got to be equal zero we want that to be below 10 so as soon as we're below 10. Right, I'll try that again. Stop requesting. Alright. Just so I can move stuff out of the way and get stuff ready. And to mouse over that so you can see the pulse. Right, if I just request... 11, I'll get them all, and you'll see that pulse. Or if I request 2, like I tried to do last time, then I should get a pulse. There you go, there's the pulse. So when it's less than 10, this machine will say, boop, boop, let's make some more. We'll get that pulse out of there. It's not going to say, let's make some more, until we wire it up. So we take this green wire out of this one. It's not going to reach there, so I'm going to need this. Take that, and we need to put it into there. Everything now that needs a red circ red signal to reset, we're going to put this, connect this to. Okay. Okay, so now this machine is complete. It should be complete. I'm just going to go quickly through it to make sure everything is set correctly. And uh, we'll run it. So let me just request it some stuff so that we've got some stuff ready to run it. I'll request that and I'll request this. So that's ready to put in as soon as I turn the inserters around. Right, so raw materials 160, 75, 20, 35. Oh, there's a there's an error I didn't pick up on. If I don't read, it's gonna break. So there we go. It's good to I'm checking. 35, 20, 20. They're all reading, they're overwritten, they're reading 75, 75 we've written reading. All good, all good. Overwrite, pulse 25, 25 pulse read, overwrite. Nice. 40 pulse, overwrite. 20 pulse, overwrite. Make sure that's not disabled, it's just reading. Make sure that's not disabled and just read in. That should be set to the same as that. Okay, we should be good, guys, for to turn this machine on. So let's turn it on. And uh, we'll see what the fruits of our labor is. 
So you can see this little um, decider combinator is now counting. Just as I said it would do. It's counted already, 75 copper ore. And it's just finished counting at 160 iron ore. And you can see now that they've stopped. They're not doing anything anymore because the parameters of these are met by the combinator, which is remembering stuff. So these are all doing their, doing the same thing as that up there, counting stuff. That's input 75 and 25, so we should have the amount of uh, circuits gone down there. And all the materials dealt with. We're getting the cogs now, we need 20 of these, which should take 40 plates. As soon as we've used the 40 plates we need, there we go. We pass the iron to the next machine to deal with. So the iron then goes into the belts and the cogs also into the belts and get passed along once we've got the, the 40 belts. The rest of the machine uh, materials come to the bottom machine to create 10 splitters. But we've got 19 in there, that's the, the couple extra that was in there before. So but now the machine's working, it's running, it's, it's done its first run and it's working. Now, if I come along, I'm a player, and I and I take away some belts, it should start again. And in the bottom this time, keep an eye. On, we'll keep an eye on it this time. We will get an exact number of ten in there because we've done all the maths from the top all the way to the bottom. We we'll get ten. And uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, you can make this machine any way you like, as long as you follow this principle pretty much, do the maths, force the uh, inserters to pick up only the, the amount you need them to pick up, where you need them to pick it up, remember the stuff in the little decider combinators and you can pretty much make any end product you like guys with this kind of machine and you won't waste any ore on little bits and you won't have stuff in storage that you might, you know, that you think, oh I might never use that or you lose bits of stuff, it just, it just stops having extra stuff that you don't need hanging about you've, and then you've only got in storage at the end, the end products which is the stuff that you as a player can use so an end product is something like an electric furnace or a, a speed module because we play a put it in a machine or a, a pipe, that's an end product and a an, an construction robot, a light, you know, these things, the combinators, <clears throat> they're end products. Having these things lying around is fine. A green circuit isn't isn't something you want lying around somewhere not used. An iron plate isn't really something you want lying around not used. Unless you've not got something being automatically made yet, then you, you know, you if you're crafting stuff in your hands, I get it that you're going to need some iron plate lying around. But in my world, I like everything to be automatic. And uh, I don't like to have to craft stuff. I like to say, hey up robots, I need such and such a number of, you know, substations. Or I need a train, or I need a train stop. And uh, the idea behind that is, behind every end product there is one of these machines that doesn't waste anything there's nothing laying around that I don't need you know so uh, let's just run this machine one just check this box actually for the 10 which we've got there a lot and then we're gonna prove to you that we've got zero extra stuff lying around anywhere in any of these boxes in any of these assemblers there's no extra stuff lying around, there's no copper still spinning around this belt waiting to be used there's no ore extra you know there's nothing extra and that's what this machine is for is to build stuff without using extra stuff and uh, in the long run it could save you power and stuff it can you know in the long run it can save you all sorts of stuff but you know it's not necessary in Factorio it's something that's just cool to build and uh, 
serves its purpose in, in, in some places. Like, if you was in a, a world where you needed to produce the minimum amount of pollution that you possibly could because you're playing hardcore and there's biters everywhere and they evolve super fast before you, you know, if this is going to help you do that. You're not going to be constantly churning out millions of this, millions of that because you only need a certain amount of whatever. And this machine achieves that. So, uh, if you like it, guys, you know what to do. And if you don't like it, and you're still watching at this point, you must have liked it, really. And uh, to, to the guys I've mentioned, and to everybody else, see you next time.